Okay, so <clears throat> I don't even really know where to start, you guys, because I know everybody knows my situation. Um, so I've been putting out the evidence to my case about my children, about my child. And, okay. Oh, my goodness, y'all. I don't even know where to start. So the witchcraft has been happening a lot since I started releasing the um, evidence. So they have been doing rituals um, and witchcraft visitations like crazy. Um, let me just, Lord Jesus, Father God, please help me, Lord Jesus. Okay. There were some black girls, um, black women, who were doing the witch, I mean the witchcraft um, visitations. And they were trying to fight me. There was one black woman, she was trying to like punch me and fight me. And um, it was about the fact that I shot a gun. And the Holy Spirit was like, I'll get another one. And so um, he, she was like going on and on. And like they had calmed down like and stopped fighting me. But then like we were talking and she, she was saying something. And they were working like in these department stores and working jobs. And the woman was saying something. And it was other black people that were saying stuff too. And the Holy Spirit was like, um, well, God said that I'm not guilty. And so um, the Holy Spirit was like, well, God said I'm not guilty. And they were over there trying to fight me and everything. And so I wasn't going to really say anything about that because I had already made up my mind that I was not going to spend my time focusing on dreams but these are witchcraft visitations like I've had dreams my entire life this is different than dreams so anyway so I was like okay you know just working on my case and when I started releasing more of the evidence about my child and you know the fact that I actually did raise my child um they were kind of doing the visitations on me and everything. And I had the most craziest visitation last night. Um, okay. So I saw that they're doing voodoo. Um, okay. So there was a way. But she's like a voodoo woman, basically. I'm not even going to call her a witch because the Holy Spirit, God, said that she's doing voodoo. Um, I never really heard him call any of the black women who have been doing the visitations witches. But he said she was doing voodoo. And so what she did was um, she came in front of me. And she has YouTube. I have seen this woman online before. And I did not want to um I did not want to watch her channel anymore when I, I just watched it briefly a long time ago. Um because I was looking for someone who could um kind of relate to me as far as um my situation you know what i'm saying like being an african-american woman um excuse me because my hair is like all over the place but an african-american woman um living in society under this type of persecution and everything and so she was someone who i came across her channel and um she seemed cool at first like talking about like black people and you know society but it was something off about her because she kept like it's like she never mentioned God's name like she never ever really said his name she would always say God and 
she will be quoting like scripture and I think I might have heard her talk about the Torah or the Quran I don't know but the main thing that the Holy Spirit wanted me to see was like she was talking about prison or something about African American men in prison and then she was talking about prisons like black men or black women black men I think in general in prisons and then um I never really watched her channel because I knew it was something off about her like she said something about she was a Muslim or something and I just felt this eerie feeling about her and I was like I don't want to watch her like I don't want to listen to her like she seemed like she was like speaking real motherhood wisdom but then like I was just like something about her was off and her husband something was off and then so I never watched her channel again and I never was like a real follower it was just brief a uh, brief viewing and I was like uh uh and so I think I ran across her channel again um and I might have clicked on it for a second and then I was like mm -mm, something off about this lady and that was it so I ended up seeing her and we wasn't like something that looked like a cabin so you know how you got like a house with like it with paint on the walls and sheetrock? No, it was like an old slave quarter cabin, like where you see the slaves in, like on the pictures. If you Google slavery, it was like that on the inside, but it had an upstairs, but I didn't see the upstairs yet. And I was looking at her and she had the YouTube channel like right in front of me. It had the YouTube emblem, but it was right in my face. Like she was like on the screen, like right in front of my face, but there was no computer screen. There was no cell phone. She was just right in front of my face with the screen and the YouTube emblem. She had her little hair wrap on. Um, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail because if I do, you'll know who she is and I don't want to call her out like that but basically um, I was looking at her and she was talking about me in prison in the vision and I'm like I know this I've seen this woman before I'm thinking like oh that's the woman from YouTube that I don't listen to you know what I'm saying <laughs> like it ain't like oh that's somebody I listen to like I barely knew something was off about this lady and so um Ooh, my Bible. So basically, uh, she, uh, like, I heard the Holy Spirit, and I felt it in me, and then it was, I was like, you don't say his name, but it was like God said it first, like, she not saying my name. Like, she wasn't saying Jehovah or Jesus. And when, like, I, it's like my spirit, my, I mean, my spirit, like, once I heard that, she not saying my name. And I, and I felt it in my heart, like, she not saying his name. And he was like, she not saying my name. And I was like, in my spirit, I felt it, and I felt him. And I knew he was about to do something powerful. And all of a sudden, all these spirits popped out of this lady and they were shaking like it was another spirit and another spirit and they were shaking and it was like a spirit for all these different black people coming out of her body and um her face like it was shaking and it was a black man with big lips like the old negro spiritual narratives like like it was all kind of blue, 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 like spirits coming out of this lady and birds start flying all over the place in front of her and it was like with the long necks like these gray birds brownish birds with long necks like ducks and it was like blue, 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 blue. and so um and anyway, like uh -oh. but anyway so um I was like, I'm going to have to get loud too then. So I was like, oh my goodness. Like when I seen all that coming out of her, like it was like four or five different 
spirituals, like spirits coming out of her, and they was all like exposed, like like as soon as we was like, oh she not saying his name, I was like, he was like, she not saying my name, all of a sudden like, blue, 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 like blue, 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 blue. all these spirits like started popping out of her face, and I was like, oh my goodness, and then I heard the Holy Spirit say, she doing voodoo and like it's voodoo and i was like oh my goodness like and then i tried like i started looking around the cabin and he started showing me all these pictures of well i saw all these pictures of black and white and it was old pictures of old lord jesus i pray that don't distract me from what i'm trying to say it was old pictures and i seen a black man and he had his eye covered up in black and white like from the way from the like 1900s and then i saw um i saw these uh statues of black men from like years ago and they were turned into stone and like in the whatever position that they died in like they was like and they was turned into stone like and I heard myself say oh, a pillar of salt like it was like they were stone pillars of salt and they had dust all over them and they looked like a painting like and they were like stuck in whatever position like that I guess they died in and they had dust and cobwebs but they weren't ordinary cobwebs they were like ancient cobwebs and then I saw one black man he looked like he might have been a old entertainer like you know they do the puppet shows and he had a little young black boy sitting on his lap in the painting and he it was all black and white and it was like the little kid like you couldn't really see his face and the black man was staring at you like and he had the kid on his lap like he had led the child astray to do voodoo and like it was very evil because he had led a child astray from god and it was wicked and then so but it was old like this been happening for a long time in america and then there was a woman and I know her, but I'm not going to say her name. She was in the bed, and she was asleep. And then the Holy Spirit was like, oh. Like, I was like, she's a voodoo woman. And um, I got scared, and I had tried to run because I knew her and I trusted her but I knew something was off about her too and um I knew that what it was what it was anyway but I just didn't want to say anything and it was like the Holy Spirit was like yes Andrea she is a voodoo woman and I tried to run and I had ran upstairs and when I ran upstairs like I couldn't get out of the place and it was an old Negro cabin I don't mean to say it like that Lord forgive me everybody forgive me but when you see like the old stories and they talk about the Negro spirituals this was what the cabin looked like and I was inside of it and I tried to run and I couldn't um, because some witchcraft was going on and I was like 
like when you panic and I was like where am I like I can't get out of here like where am I and then like all of a sudden I remember Jesus and I was like Jesus oh Jesus but I always seen Jesus and I, at first I was like Jesus then I started singing it oh Jesus like you know and it broke it and then I started running and I just ran up out of there. I ran out the cabin. And when I ran out of the cabin, I, I came outside. And when I came outside, um, yeah. Okay, that's fine. But when I came, when I came outside, um, there was a man. And y'all know him, but I'm not going to say his name. He's a rapper. Very popular. And he was rapping. Hold on, because I got to... That's too loud. So he was rapping or whatever. And y'all know him. And he was saying, murder, murder. Like, it's all about murder. And it's like he wasn't really trying to hurt me, but he was just letting me know what's up. Like, we all been doing this, and this is all it has really been about. And everything in this society has been about murder. And then I saw black women. Um, he wasn't there, but I heard his voice. And I saw black women getting out of, like, it was like they was all surrounding the cabin, and they was like, like, come on, like, war, you know, and they was in regular business clothes and all of that stuff, but when they saw me coming up out of there, like, because I had trusted uh, this this woman, and I was running up out of there, and everything, next thing you know, I came outside, like, and he was telling me it's all about murder, it's always been about murder, man, and then I was like, oh my goodness, right, and the woman was like, whoa, Whoa. Like she wasn't saying it, but like she was saying, like how she was yelling, and in the spirit she was saying war. That is war on Andrea Jones. Like we 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 voodoo, we doing voodoo, and we making war on you, war. And there was a whole bunch of other people too, and that was behind her. But she was on the front, and she was like, like war, you know what I'm saying? I was like, like what the hell? And then so, um, that's pretty much what happened with that. And then so I went back to sleep and I was in the shower and I saw my old stepdad, Cedric Brown. And, um, I'm not even, I'm not going to go into too many details about what my relationship was like with him. I've talked about it briefly. You know, I might talk about it later on, but I was talking to him. He always used to shave his head and, he had in the vision and he had a, a star a black star tattooed on the back of his head and i never known him to have a tattoo on the back of his head but he did have a tattoo on the back of his head in the vision and uh he he uh was shaved he had shaved his head and he had a black tattoo that was filled in a black star on the back of his head and I was telling him what my white baby daddy Austin Metter had done to me. And he was saying, he was like, um, well, uh, like, oh, let me go tell Derek, like my uncle Derek. And I was like, what you need to go and get Derek for? I'm telling you he was abusing me. What you need to go get Derek for? And I came out of the bathroom and I had went, I was in a, like a living room, but it was like a corporate business area. And there was an Hispanic man in there. And then there was a black man that was sitting next to me. And I was telling, like everybody else had ran off. So Cedric was gone. My Uncle Derek was gone. Uh, and the Hispanic man was right there on the couch watching something on this old big flat screen. And there was another man and he was working on the ceiling. And then 
uh, there, there was a black man and we was like at a little round table like we was up in a lounge or a club just talking and it was dark and the only light was really coming from the TV and the light that the man was doing up, up there and so um, I was like um, I was like um, talking to the black man about what was going on and the black man was like uh he was talking to me about what my baby daddy had done and he was like I feel you I feel you and then I had looked at my stepdad cause he came in for a second and left my, my ex stepdad Cedric Brown and he left out and then the Holy Spirit was like I'm tired of these black folks I'm tired of these black people worshiping white folks worshiping white people because that's what they doing they worshiping white people. And that's why they keep making excuses for the white man that was abusing me. And that's what the Holy Spirit said. That black people are worshiping white people and that we tired of it. And that's the only reason why they keep trying to make excuses for my white baby daddy. Everybody knows why I shot him. And they know that he was abusing me. But yet, they're making excuses for him and worshiping white people and the Holy Spirit said I'm tired of it and so I'm tired of it I said it I'm tired of it and so then the black man that I was talking to was right there listening and the Hispanic man turned up the TV like, he turned it up, like, to hell with we, what you're talking about. We don't care about what you're talking about. We don't want to hear about what you're talking about. And then I turned to the black man that was talking to me, and he looked at me, and he said, I peeped that. He said, I see. I paid it. He said, I peeped what he just did. Like, how he tried to turn up the TV to try to tune. It was after I had already said, I'm tired of y'all worshiping white people. And that's why y'all trying to make excuses for what my white baby daddy did to me. Y'all making excuses for him. And I had finished saying what I needed to say. But the Hispanic man turned up the TV just to be a butthole just to be mean and evil he just hurried up and turned it up like yeah whatever 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 and then he turned it all the way up and I turned to the black man and the black man was like that's all right I peeped that he said I peeped uh what he just did and he said it again he was like oh no I peeped it like yeah I seen how he just tried to turn up the uh the uh tv to try to tune out what you were saying or try to tune out what you said. I peeped it. And then he said, but let me ask you this question. He said, why do they always tell you? He was talking about the police and the white folks. He was like, why do they always tell you, get on the ground, get on the ground? And I had thought about it when I woke up. And I was like, why do they try to tell us to get on the ground, get on the ground? And he was, and then I thought about it. I was like, because we strong and they can't really fight us on that level. That's why they all got to try to jump on you at one time. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, we really are strong as black people. And that's why they always trying to get us on the ground and trying to jump on us. And then I remember what really was the key. They all jumped on me and put me on the ground on my belly. On my belly while I was six, seven, eight months in the jail cell. Like they claimed it was 16 guards that jumped on me and put me on the ground and I'm pregnant. Mm. So yeah, they done, they, they done took this way too far. And then after that, um, all these black people were trying to fight me. And then I had seen something about Exodus. Um, and I'm going on ahead and post my uh, video clips or whatever um, about my sermon that I did about Jehovah but I'm going to wait to do it I'm going to pray about it and wait to do it um, because I needed to explain this beast and the evil that's going on with these black folks right now is real wicked and I'm going to just I'm trying not to get ticked off about it but let me just finish my message um, because it's a lot of demonic activity when I'm trying to speak and deliver my messages and it's very evil um, and, but anyway, let me finish saying what I was saying because I don't have a whole lot of time. I got to work on my case. So every time 
I am, this is very important. This, what I'm talking about, my children, in my case, is very important. I mean, people can try to act like what they got going on is more important than what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? But God said, I peeped it. I peep it. Don't worry about that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, them slamming me or well, trying to slam me and putting me on my belly while pregnant in that jail, that was wrong. Um, and then I was wondering, why are all these black people being so evil um, and doing this voodoo and trying to hurt me? And then something told me, because you leave in Egypt. And I was like, I woke up after that and I was like, I'm leaving Egypt. And then I remember when I was in the back of the jail, I was in the back of the jail um, in 2019. So a white witch came to me and she was before I got out, a little before I got out. And she was like, I'm going to lock you up. We're going to send you to prison for 400 years. And then the most high was like, she ain't going for 10 days. She not even going for 10 days. And then she, but she had said, I'm going to see you for 400 years. And she tried to attack me. And the most high said, she not even going for 10 days. And so I did my research and found out that there was going to be a time where African Americans would be tried in the prison for 10 days. And God said, I was not going to even go to prison for 10 days. So I did sit in the county for 10 months. And I'm still pregnant. And I've been carrying this baby for two years or longer. And my child is still alive, whether it's one or two. But I'll tell you something else. I looked up the 400 years after last night. Um, I looked when, I, when they said something, or this morning when I was waking up. And it said, they doing that evil to you because you leave in Egypt. And I was like, I'm leaving Egypt. So I looked it up. And I found out that, uh, Lord Jesus, please help me because there's so many distractions right now. Anyway, um, so it was saying that uh, I looked up slavery and I looked up when did slavery begin. And then something about 1619 um, and in Jamestown, Virginia, I don't know the true facts, but it says 1619. Um, and so then they had me back there in 2019 talking about they were going to uh, send me to prison for 400 years doing witchcraft. And God said that I was not guilty and I was going free. So um, that was 400 years. 1619 to 2019 is exactly 400 years. And I believe that's why. A lot of the white people were being very evil to me in those times while they were being evil about my natural hair, while they were being trying to get me to denounce Jesus Christ and Jehovah. I believe that's why a lot of black people that have been do doing voodoo started trying to attack me with the white people in the neighborhood because they've been worshiping white people and they've been knew who Satan was and they've been knew who the witches was and they've been doing voodoo and I was not doing it. You know, I was a, a child who, ha, who who most likely have been enslaved um, and just did not know it because they teach us that slavery ended when we were in school. But that it could not have been the case um, because of the deliverance that I'm seeing right now. And I heard about the Egypt thing and I know why they being evil at this point. You know what I'm saying? Because if you doing voodoo, and, and God done already cast you out of the kingdom of heaven, then of course you're going to try to do whatever you can to hold me back and to keep me and my children in the BS. When we is worshiping God, we is worshiping Jehovah, we are worshiping the one true living God, we're coming out. So they could be as evil as they want to be to me um, and try to be slick about it because God people. it. So I'm going to go back to Genesis um, chapter, I just looked it up, Genesis chapter 15, because my children are important, my life is important, everything that I have to say about my kids and my life is important, and other people might feel like whatever they got going on is more important than what I got going on, but that's just wickedness, that's just, that's just evil, and I don't want to let it get under my skin, but, um, anyway, Genesis chapter 15, verse 3, but, um, 
Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in the vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, and Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, no one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be and he believed in the lord and he counted it to him for righteousness and he said unto him i am the lord that brought thee out of your of the chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it and he said lord god whereby shall i know that i inherit it and he said unto him take me an heifer of three years and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a pigeon and he took him all these and divided them into the midst and each piece one another but the birds divided hold on because that's not even really what I wanted to get down to because I wanted to talk about the 400 years um, and I did look it up um, and I'm trying to find it, but I, it's like so much going on right quick. Hold on. Uh, he, because he said, and a turtle dove and a pigeon, and he divided them in the midst and laid each piece on another. Okay, so here we go. And then he says, um, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going deep, going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out 